Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. At the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. Once there was a silly old ant who thought he could move a rubber tree plant. Everyone knows an ant can't move a rubber tree plant, but he had high hopes. He had high hopes. He had high apple pie in the sky. Hopes anyway. I had a hard time keeping a straight face on that one. All right, ignore the singing, but the song is adorable because it talks about several times a thing or a person had high hopes and they just kept going and nobody thought they could do it, but they did. And I know that most of us, if we look back to the time when we were 10 years old, even teenagers and a little beyond, we had such great hopes and dreams of what we were going to do and who we were going to be and how we were going to change the world, right? We were going to conquer all of this stuff that was happening in our world and we were going to make it right. I'm of the age where we were on kind of the tail end of the hippie movement, but we were maybe hippies, pseudo hippies anyway. And so we were protesters. We were marching in the streets. We got on the buses, everything our parents didn't want us to do. And some of it was because everybody else was doing it. We wanted to be so individual and so on our own that we wanted to do what everybody else was doing. And I think the high hopes that we had were probably, I don't know, maybe hopes that were given to us by friends when our family, or certainly our parents, hoped that we would graduate from college, which we did through a lot of struggle and a lot of help from my husband-to-be. And then we had the hope of, you know, what our families would be doing, and we hoped how we would stay in touch with our friends, our occupations. We wanted to change the world, and that's why I went into teaching. I figured by the end of my finally uh, schooling, I remembered that I had thought I could change the world, but now I could barely change myself. So what about helping others that had been troubled teens like I was? What had been their hopes and dreams? And some of them just didn't have any. Some of them didn't have good parents like my husband and I both had. And some of them had no idea what they wanted to do with the rest of their lives. I really didn't. I just kind of plodded along until I got old enough and mature enough and my brain was developed enough to realize I could even go back to school and get a master's degree and that I could do things that I never thought that I could. Many people know what their gifts and talents are but they're just either afraid or embarrassed or defeated to the point that they don't know if they'll ever be able to do that again. I may have shared with you before that when I was working on my master's degree, there was a woman in there who was in her late 50s. She would turn 60 before she had her master's degree. And even her own kids and grandkids were saying, Grandma, you're going to be 60 years old in four years when you finish your master's. She said, I'm going to be 60 years old in four years whether I do or not. And she went on to use it and helped start a private charter school. She helped do a lot of work with troubled teens. And I was just absolutely amazed that if she could do that when she was 60, I could certainly do it when I wasn't even 30 yet. So the high hopes that we have also have a great basis and foundation. The definition of hope is actually a favorable and confident expectation an expectant attitude that something good is going to happen and that things will work out no matter what we're facing. Well, 
I know that all of us are facing something. We never knew that we would be battling cancer in my husband, cancer in my mama, chronic back and sciatic pain for me, knee and hip situations for my sister. Everybody's got something. I don't have any friends who are not facing some kind of trial physically, emotionally, maybe in their families. Maybe it's a spiritual battle. Maybe some who are now at the age where they're wanting to help their kids and grandkids face their own demons and get through them. But when times are really tough, when we go through things, even when we are disappointed, there is still something that will rise up in us and say, okay, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can like the little train, but... Better than the little train, I have great scriptures that I started finding when I became a Christian. And I was in my 20s, and one of them was my earliest. Most of you know, if you too have studied scripture, Jeremiah 29 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but plans to give you hope and a future. God has plans to give us hope. So if he's planning on giving us hope, what else do we need, right? In Romans 12, 12, be joyful in hope and then be patient when you're going through affliction and faithful in prayer. There's the key for me. If I don't pray, that's when I start to lose hope. If I don't read what God says about it and his promises, I start to really lose hope. Psalm 147, verse 11 says, The Lord delights in those who put their hope in his unfailing love. Through the years, I've gone too far, done too much to not ever be persuaded that God doesn't work things out according to his purpose, his plans, and those who believe in him. And I do. And his unfailing love is unfailing. He has never failed me in any situation of my life. Oh, I've had a lot of trouble and trials and situations and never made a boatload of money, but we certainly made enough to get by and have a great retirement and fun and to be able to help others. I'm involved in more clubs and organizations now than I even was when I was teaching and in my younger years. And most of those that I am in now go right along with my past teaching and helping to start an alternative school. What is your hope? What is it that God has promised you that maybe you haven't seen yet? Go back to scripture and start planning to read and trust and give him back what he wrote and tell him why you believe and that you are completely satisfied in submitting and surrendering to his perfect will for you. God, I pray for the one right now who maybe has given up hope. They think they're too sick, too old, too something or other. Maybe they don't have any hope in their ability anymore. But you know the plans you have for them, God. Help them to surrender to your plans, to know that that's where they will find true peace, true satisfaction, and let them learn to have that same blessed hope that you have promised to each of your children. And if they've never trusted in you as Savior, let them do it right now to just say, okay, God, I'm going to believe that you so loved the world. You gave your only son, Jesus, to die that I might be forgiven of my sins and that I might have hope and hope eternal. And that's what he promises if we will trust in him. A, just admit we're sinners. B, believe that he so loved us. He sent Jesus to take our place and confess our own sins and let him have the rest of our lives. I already am, and I want the same for you, my friend. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and all of his glorious righteousness. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I'm Dr. Pepper, shaking the salt. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, 
Have me come speak to your group or maybe just request prayer. Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.